With the introduction of the Thermal Scientific Arbitrap IDX mass spectrometer, built on the inherent robustness and flexibility that our customers have grown to expect from the Arbitrap Tribrid family of instruments, we now have a compelling solution to bring to the market for small molecule identification of both known and unknowns. And this is particularly impactful for the pharmaceutical industry. In combination with Thermoscientific Compound Discoverer 3.0, MZ Logic and Acquire X data algorithms, we can now offer a compelling solution to the pharmaceutical industry. The pharmaceutical industry is increasingly challenged to discover and develop the next generation of therapeutic drugs as fast as possible. And there are a number of key workflows for which they apply high resolution accurate mass mass spectrometry. These include areas such as pharmacokinetics, metabolite identification, um, impurity and degradant analysis, and extractables and leachables analyses. Now each of these comes with its own unique challenges. So if we think about metabolite identification, our customers are looking at really complex biological matrices such as feces, urine, bile, plasma, and within there, they need to detect not only the parent drug compound and the quantity of that over time post-dose, but they also need to look at metabolites that are formed from in vitro and in vivo metabolite identification experiments. So these might be present at very low levels. They may be easy to link back to the parent drug compound. Sometimes they may not be if it's a phase two metabolite, for example. Um, they may be present as, as isomeric species. So there are not only mass spectrometric challenges, but also chromatographic challenges there in separation of the different species. So as Ronan mentioned, there's a lot of challenges that are faced by scientists in the pharmaceutical industry. And a lot of those challenges are being very well met by some of the new tools that are being introduced. If we look at metabolite identification, for example, Really, we have to identify and detect metabolites in very complex matrices. We can't afford to be surprised by new metabolites when we go into first in human studies. So we look at a tool like AcquireX. This is an excellent way to, in a very easy and automated fashion, to dig very deep into complex matrix samples and find data on all of these potential metabolites with that fragmentation information. We can use the tools that we have in applications like Compound Discover to find these metabolites early and confidently and identify them. So with improvements in uh, chromat uh, chromatographic technologies, UHPLC and column chemistries, this allows for more aggressive gradients, shorter run times. We're really compressing some of these very complex gradients uh, and increasing the density of features. That makes this job of detecting all of the components and getting data on it even more complex. You know, our current technologies, this takes a lot of time. You have to inject samples, analyze the data, go back and make re-injections again and again, or you're gonna to have to compromise and use some kind of a data independent acquisition where your spectral quality might not be as good and it makes the challenge of identification a little harder. Again, we come back with something like AcquireX. That removes all of these complexities. It automates that process and gets us the right data, even in an aggressive gradient short run times. And it gets us data dependent precursor ion selected fragmentation data, which is the best when we're trying to do structural elucidation uh, and library searching, for example. And another thing that we can get a benefit from with intelligent acquisition is that we can use some of the duty cycle of the instrument to get us MSN data which is something that our hybrid instruments have always excelled at, is being able to get MS3 and MS4 fragmentation data. You think of it like learning a lot more about an unknown molecule. In extractables and leachables, all of our compounds are essentially unknown. By taking a molecule and breaking it down sequentially into smaller and smaller pieces, we learn more and more about its structure. This allows us to do things like substructure searches in libraries so that we can learn the pieces that our unknowns are made out of because we have a compound that may not be in any spectral library anywhere, but we still need to find out what it is. With MSN data, I can tell you substructurally it's made of certain pieces. That gives us a lot more information that we can use to try to come up with de novo structures.